probability is wide. So we're going to look at this question, but before we tackle this question, we will need to firstly understand a few axioms of probability, a few properties of probability. So probability always range up to one. So meaning the range for probability should be probability such that it's between zero and what? And one. For example, space two, code. So to unite is to add the probability of A and B is simply the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the intersection of A and B. So this means that if you want to make A intersection B subject, how does it become? A intersection B therefore becomes what? This guy comes this side and this guy flies over the other side. The probability of A plus probability of B minus what? Probability of A union B. So this is just coming from is axiom of probability. Also, there's a key thing which is called A theorem. A theorem is a pattern. You take this base down here, and you intersect the two available letters, starting with one which starts or comes first in the alphabet. So we're going to have A intersection B then B. That being said, can somebody help us expand probability of B given A? B given A, what comes down? Probability of A. Of A. And what do we have on top? Probability of B intersection A. Probability of B intersection A. So this is a very key axiom of probability, which is simply like special paper one is a pattern. All right. So suppose I asked you to find the probability of A Given, given a complement. Who can expand this for us? Who can expand that for us? So this is what comes down there, a complement. And here we're going to have the probability of what? B intersection, a complement. What is a complement? A complement is what is outside. So a complement is simply one minus the probability of A. What do I mean by outside? A is 20%, what is remaining 80%. So that is what we call complement. If B is 10%, what is the complement of B? One minus 10% or 0 0.10, we get 90% or 0 0.9. Quick, can you remember? What did I say? The complement of A? What is the complement of A? One minus probability of A. 
minus four beta squared. Right. So if A is a uh, twenty percent, what is the complement of A? What is the complement of A? Eighty percent correct, or one minus zero point eight, zero point two, which is zero point eight correct. Also mentioned a complement. If we're given A, given B, how do we expand this? You write over. Start with over. Uh huh. Probability of B. Uh mm -hmm. On top there. Mm -hmm. Probability of A intersection B. Correct. Yeah. So suppose you're taught that the probability of A given B is 0 0.5. The probability of uh, A is 0 0.2. The probability of B is 0 0.3. How do we find the intersection? Just substitute what we have here. What have we been given? Probability of A given B is what? 0.5. Intersection we don't have. What is the probability of B? Probability of B is 0. what? 0. 0.3. So we just cross multiply. So our A intersection B is therefore going to be equal to what? 0. 0.5 times 0. 0.3 which gives us 0.15 together. Yes. All right. So there's another good theory, which is uh, theorem two. Probability of A is simply given by A intersection B plus A intersection B the complement will be on the other layer. So if this is A, we'll put the complement on, on B there. Let's try. Suppose it is B, who wants to give us the formula? It's A intersection B plus A intersection B, but this time the complement will be on which letter? If B is subject, the complement will be on which letter? The other letter. A, A was subject, the complement will be on the other letter, which is what? B. Get that idea? All right. Then we also talked about the, the union set, A union B. Remember, what's the formula for A union B? Probability of A plus probability of B plus probability of A intersection B. Mm. Ah! Ew, sorry, sorry. So, probability of A plus probability of B minus the intersection of what? A intersection B. Correct. When you make this subject of formula, we're going to have what? Probability of A intersection B is the same as what? Probability of A plus probability of B minus the union set of A and B. So far on these axioms, anyone behind? Are we on the same page? Okay, now let's go to an exam question. We're given the following parameters. Okay, so let me just put this on one page so that we can work it out together. Mm -hmm. 
So we're told that number one, consider an insurer that offers two types of policies. There's a home, a car insurance policy. So these are the two policies that we have, home and what? And car. So we can use our own letters to say home and what? H. And car can be what? C. So 87% of all customers have a home insurance. So what's the probability of H? Eighty seven percent so zero point eight seven. The car insurance told that ninety six percent of all customers have what car insurance. So this is zero point nine six. What else are we told? But also we told that at least every customer has at least one of the two. So H union C. So Okay. So now with the parameters that have been given, let us calculate. Get the probability that a selected uh, customer does not have a car insurance. What are they asking for here? But one, the probability that one does not have a car insurance. So, what are we looking for? Complement. Complement of what? Of C. How do you find the complement of C? One, one minus, minus 0 0.96. Probability of C, which is 0 0.96. To give us what? Zero point zero four. Are we all agreeing? Yes. Okay. In part two, what is the probability that one has insurance and a home insurance. Red end is the same as intersection. Union goes with all. So find the probability that he has a car and home insurance. So probability of C union what? H. How do you find the probability of C? Intersection H. We say that this is the same as probability of what? A plus what? A bit of what? A bit of C plus a bit of what? H minus what? Union. If this is intersection here, we put union. C union H. All right. What is the probability of C? 0 0.96. What is the probability of H? 0 0.87. 87. And what is the union? 1. So what do we get? 96 plus 87 minus 1. 0. what? Three. Then question number three, what is the probability that he has a home insurance given that he has a car insurance? The probability of H given what? Given C. So who can expand this for us? What is H? 
frequency we can expand right over over probability of c mm -hmm. Same. on top there probability of h intersection c okay. so what is h intersection c 0 0.83 same as c intersection h is 0 0.83 so if you get this wrong you also get this wrong and what is the probability of c point so when you divide that what are we getting zero point eight six okay then lastly I told that What's the probability that he does not have a car insurance given that he has home insurance? Can somebody give us a notation? What is the notation? It's a probability car insurance complement mm -hmm. given. Uh, Home insurance. Great. Then how do we expand it? Comes down there. H. Probability of home insurance. Then on top. Probability of uh, complement of uh, car insurance intersection uh, home insurance. All right. So whenever you have this scenario, let's know that we need to use theorem what? Theorem two, the complement is on C, meaning the subject of the formula must be H. So H is equal to what? Probability of C complement the session H as the probability of C complement, no, C in the session H. But here you ask yourself if H is subject of formula, complement should be on the other letter, which is what? C. Right. So this is very important. I repeat. Question is asking us to find probability that it does not have insurance, even as home insurance. So we are saying probability C complement even H. This is easy. So you're going to say C complement intersection H over a bit of H. How do we know which rule to use now? Whenever there's a complement inside there, you can try them, try and error. Let's start with H, we can start with C. So here, whenever you're doing theorem two, you're just adding two intersections. C intersection H plus C intersection H. In here, C intersection H plus C intersection H, you swap now. Where there is C, where there is H, the complement should be on the other letter. Where there is C, the complement should be on the other letter. Which one do we pick? One that has what we are looking for here. So this one with the complement on C, so we're going to pick this one. Now, having decided that, let's now substitute. A bit of H, we have, yes. A bit of H is your point. Eight seven. So here he puts zero point eight seven is equal to this part we don't know. C complement intersection H. But the complement with the intersection we found of C intersection H was zero point eight three. So here he puts zero point eight three. So we make this subject of the formula. So how do you find the probability of C complement intersection H to be 
0 0.87 minus what? 0 0.83, which is 0 0.04. So this is what we're going to put here. 0 0.04, the probability of H was 0 0.87. This one was a tough one because you needed to think very much. So when you divide that, you find 0 0.04 over 0 0.87, which is 0 0.046. That would be your final answer. So if you don't know the theorems, much know where to start from. All right, so we have question two. In this study, we asked to compare teaching methods of 20 children which were divided into two groups. Each group taught, was taught reading Using one method. After six months, the two groups were given the same test, one pew pew. The first group was ill and missed the test. The scores are shown below. So there's method one, missing one pew pew, method two, or 10. So we're being asked to calculate the extreme values, the quartiles for each group, seven months. So remember, this is top one. How do we find the extreme values? And how do we find the quartiles? Okay, can anyone lead us? Who wants to try to take us through? I was teaching this yesterday. Anyone? Okay. Hi, hi, yeah. yeah. hi. Apologies. Uh, uh, I'm on the road, but uh, what it is is uh, we need we need to <clears throat> we need to uh, arrange the information. And uh, once we arrange the information, we need to calculate uh, the, the, the we need to calculate the quartiles, which is uh, the first quartile, being uh, uh, a quarter of n plus one, which is going to help us to determine the position of the first quarter. Then this uh, the median will be calculated by half uh, n plus one. Then uh, he also, we are going to, 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 to use the three quarters, which will be our third quarter, three quarters of N plus one to give us the third quarter, except uh, before all that, we need to determine the range, which will be the uh, X uh, max minus the X mean values, uh, which, which is going to help us to, 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 to determine the, the the outliers when uh, multiplied with the with the 1.5 correction term. Thank you so much. So it has impressed me. Um, so we rearrange them in order, starting from the smallest to the highest. So this is the method that has been given. So we're going to rearrange them. So rearrange them, we start with 50, 71, 73, 76, 79, 80, 81, 85, and 89. So the extreme values, firstly, us to identify lowest value is 50 and the highest value is 89. So how do we find the median? The formula for the median is what? Half n plus one. Half n plus one. 
Okay. So our numbers are what? Nine. Nine plus one is ten. So half of ten is what? Five. So the fifth position could be as follows. One, two, three, four, five. So this is going to be our median. So 79 becomes our median because we calculated it as follows. Together so far. Sorry, are you writing or just explaining? Writing. Oh, oh I wasn't writing. dreaming. Writing. I need to repeat that. So we rearrange our figures. The smallest 50, 71, 73 up to highest number. So to find the median, it is half of n plus one. So our n was nine, nine plus one is 10. So half of n is the fifth position. So one, two, three, four, five. So this is the fifth position. And this becomes our what? Our median. How do you find the lower quarter? Lower quarter is given by what? Q1. All right. So Q1 is a quarter of 10 plus 1. So a quarter of 10 gives us 2.5. Now, whenever I have a 0.5, it means this number and what follows we divide by 2. We have a range. We have 2.25, we just get 2. 0.75, we get 3. 2.5, the second number, the third one, you average them. So when you go here, one, two, the second number and the third one, you add them, you average them. So this gives us uh, 144 divided by two, which gives us 72. So how do you find the Again number? on that one. Hello? Yes, please. Just come again. You said we found 2.5. So rounding off the 2.5, we get 3. And then... Oh, if you find 2.5, round off to get a what? A 2. Yes. You get 0.75, you round off to get a what? A 3. A 3. If you yes. get a 2.5, you don't round off. You get the second number and the number that follows, which is the third number. You get the average at 17.5. Get the 17th number, and the what? 18th number, and you add them and divide by two. So here, since we're at 2.5, the second number, and the third number, you divide by two. Is that clear? And the, so if we got the three, we're just going to get the third number. That's it. No, exactly. Any. Yeah. Exactly. All right. So how do you find the upper quarter, Q3? Three quarters n plus one. Formula, uh-huh. Three, three, three quarters. Three quarters. N plus one. Yeah, three one. quarters of n plus one, correct? So what is three quarters of n? What is three quarters of ten? Seven point five. Seven point five. So what do we do? Seven point five. So we are going to 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 find the the the, the, the number between five and eight. I think. I mean seven and eight. It's the seventh. And the following number is the eighth. So this is mm -hmm. fifth, five, six, seven, eight. So the seventh is what? Eight one. Eight. The eighth That's is what? Eighty five. So when you add this, then over two. Over two. So eight one plus eighty mm -hmm. five divided by two. That's how we get the sixty. Right? The eighty three. All right. 
So you do the same for method two, we arrange them in increasing order, these ones are n. So we increase them, and find the lower quarter, extreme values firstly, the lowest value was 61, and the highest value was 81. So the lower quarter is n plus one. So here, 10 plus one, since they are 10, divided by four, we get 2.75. This one will round it off to the third position, which is 60, right? 60, two, if we're going to count them, the third position, one, two, three. So this is our first quarter. We find the second quarter, which is the median, n plus one over two. So 10 plus one is 11, divided by two is 5.5. So what do we do to the 5.5? We get the fifth, the what? Sixth position. Sixth. And you add the two, divide by two, we get what? 23. You do this for this upper quarter as well, three quarters of n plus one. So when you get this, quarters of n plus one, we're going to get 80 what? 82, 8.25. 8.25. You just get the eighth number directly, which was 70, uh, 76. So, a box whisker plot has three important parameters, five six important parameters. Number one, the minimum value of x. Number two, the maximum value of what? Of x. So, in the first method, the minimum value was 50, and the maximum value was. 89. And the lower quarter was 72, here we had 79 and 83. Mm -hmm. So how do we find the interquartile range? We subtract the upper quarter minus the lower quarter. So 83 minus what? 72. So what do we get? We get seven. So interquartile range is 11. 11 multiplied by 1.5. Given by 1.5, what we get? 16.5. So 16.5, you add it here. And 16.5, you subtract it there. So that you identify the outliers. That is how we identify outliers, if any. Repeat. First, find the interquartile range by subtracting the highest minus the lowest uh, quartile. The answer is 11. The standard value of 1.5 is what you multiply to that interquartile range, which is 16.5. So 16.5, when you add it to this figure there, we get what? 99.5. And 1.5. 99. 99? 99.5. 99.5. And from this figure, you subtract the 16.5, what do we get? 55.5. 55. 55. 55. Where's 55 here, right? Somewhere here. So it means the 50 is outside the box. So it's called an outline. Can you do the same for me, method two. How do we find? So the values, these ones are just the minimum value of the intervals. The smallest number was 61. Highest number was what? 81. Q1 was 62. The quarter range was 73. And the upper quarter was 77.5. So how do you find the interquartile range? Anyone? IQR, how do you find it? We subtract Q3 minus Q1. Get what? We get 15.5. 15.5. Yes. What do we do to the 15.5? We multiply it by 1.5. 1.5 to get what? 23.25. 23.25 is a correction term. What do we do it on the upper half? The upper figure, what do we do? Upper figure, we we add. We add to get what? Uh, 
100.75. And the lower figure, what do we do? Subtract it. Subtract. Minus what? 23.5 to get what? At 8.75. Okay. And here, do we have an outlier? No. no. Yeah. All of them are inside. Not so my inside defenses. So, what is the difference between the two groups? Number one has an outlier. Okay. Mm -hmm. or 50. So, when they ask you, explain, explain in that range. Okay. One has an outlier. So, um, this was basically in the deferred test that was uh, last uh, semester. Uh, the old distance or time? I do not know. I'll verify. So, those who got the pamphlet, I think this is already there in the pamphlet, you can go through. If you pay for the pamphlet, please remind me I need to send it to you uh, tonight or tomorrow. Okay. You pay for it to get the solutions? Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, those, it's 250. Yeah, those who are paid oh, okay. for the pamphlet. The questions I've given all of you, but other ones who are getting. Okay. So that is with regards to um question to do with um let's look at another question for frequency distribution i think most of you are doing very fine on this one unless there's anyone who's behind so normal distribution we did this question over lunch so I want us to look at something that I've covered. Okay, this one here. The company has four locations at which customers um, were surveying the satisfaction of the ratings below are the average ratings for the four locations. So we're given the location one, two, three, four, the average in the number of customers. So how do we find average? Average is simply the mean. Anyone who wants to help us to this question? So this can be called a frequency. This can be called a midpoint. So multiply the frequency times the midpoint. Total we get is a summation of fx. And the mean is found by what? Summation of fx divided by the total frequency. So we need to total up this frequency here so that we are able to get. So let's multiply this by that, this by that. So 7.8 times 117. What are we getting? 912.6. The next one. Seven three one. Seven three one. Okay. Then Four four eight point eight. Four four eight point eight. Uh -huh. Triple six. Triple six. So the total. Guys can do the total here. The ladies can do the frequency total.
So what are we having? One seventeen plus eighty six plus sixty eight plus ninety three six one. Mm -hmm. And here, what's the total? And seven five eight. Mm -hmm. Two seven five eight point four. Four seven five eight. And what? No, two seven. Two seven five eight point four. Point four. Two seven four. Hmm. Eight point four, like this. Oh. Uh -uh. Yes, that's what I found. Like that. Two seven five eight point four. Yeah. Two seven five eight point four. Yeah. Also like that. So how do we get the mean? Two seven. 58.4 divided by what? 361. Divided by 361. What do we get? 7.64. So that is what we call our mean or the average. We find it by that. So three marks. Okay. So in here our revision will continue tomorrow up until uh under when our test commences so a little does it time is it to... tomorrow in the evening i'll be at church in the morning so we'll meet in the evening so that we can cover much i'll look at binomial distribution and normal and poison maybe he has thought and that is what is remaining we are ready for that. I don't think he thought poison. So we do binomial and normal. All right. Is there any questions?